Miss Awad. Hi, Mr. Baldwin. What are we talking about? We're going to talk about some surface area here. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about surface area. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a cube. Or in this case, we're actually just going to take a square. Let's a make bit. it a little easier. Let's just deal with two dimensions today. Two dimensions okay. are much easier. All right. Okay. So we start with this square. Yeah. It's one centimeter by one centimeter. Okay. okay so, so it has four sides, and each side is one centimeter. Okay. All right. So if we think about the surface area, I guess the perimeter at this point, the perimeter of the cube we start with is four centimeters. Correct. All the way around. Right. Okay. Now, this time what I want to do is I want to chop my square into four pieces. So you're simulating a mechanical weathering. You're making a big piece, smaller pieces. Absolutely. Okay, so it would be like if water is steeped down in the crack, split it into a couple different pieces. Right. Okay. So each of our new four cubes each has four sides, right? Yeah. Or sorry, each of our new four, four squares, squares has, has four, four sides. sides. Right. Okay. So now we created some new surfaces because we've got this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new surfaces on there. Right. So we're exposing some more surface area there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's think about what would happen to this perimeter, I guess, of all of our new squares. So. So if we were to add this up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so each of these is a half centimeter by a half centimeter. Right. So this square right here would be half, 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 and half, which is two, two centimeters. centimeters. And I've got four total squares, so... Eight centimeters. Eight centimeters. So and we were at four centimeters for the original square. Uh-huh. By splitting it in half mm -hmm. twice. Yeah. We went from four centimeters to eight. So we doubled the amount of exposed surface okay. that weathering could occur on. Okay. All right. That's a pretty interesting concept. Yeah. What if we threw some more monkey wrenches into this? What if yeah. we looked at the weathering and we were looking at a warm climate versus a cold climate? Is oh. there a difference in the rate of the weathering from a warm climate to a cold climate? Well, when I think of warm, it seems like there's just more energy in a warm climate, right? Okay. And when it's cold, it's, you know, it's cold. You don't want to really do much. There's not a lot of energy in the environment. So if it was warmer, do you think something would happen faster then? Maybe? I think we would see an increased rate. Okay. So if we think about that in an analogy of taking iced tea and taking hot tea oh, yeah. and putting sugar into it, if you use the same size sugar grains, mm -hmm. the sugar is going to dissolve faster in the warm tea versus mm -hmm. the cold tea. Okay. That would be an analogy to the warm and the cold temperature environment. Okay. Well, the difference is going to be when we've got those freeze-thaw cycles, mm -hmm. like we were looking at in frost wedging, where it yeah. changes temperature back and forth a lot. Yeah. If it's a consistently warm versus consistently cold, okay. Rate's going to be faster consistently warm. Cool. What about damp climates versus arid Ooh, climates? Okay. Arid meaning dry. dry. So, okay. like, think the desert. Yeah. So, if it was damp, so think humid, like, you know, kind of sticky, humid out. Yeah. Um, Florida. Well, Florida, perfect. Good. So, Florida versus like Arizona. Perfect. Okay. So, in Florida, there's more air in the or moisture in the air, mm -hmm. and Nevada or Arizona, there's less. Mm -hmm. So if there's more water in the air, chances are there's got to be more reactions taking place. Mm -hmm. Okay? So warmer, wetter, more surface area, those are things that will speed up the rate of reaction. Hey, you guys, you want to write this down. Okay. Three things that will speed up the rate of reaction are? Warmer. Yes. Uh, more surface area. Yes. And more water. Yes. Perfect. Cool. All right. We got that. So let's go on to the next slide. I think we have a video here for him, right? Uh, yeah, we have a quick video we're going to watch. Just kind of show some of this in actual motion. Something that we've actually probably have all done before, seen before. Okay. Alka-Seltzer and changing the surface area. All right, let's take a look at the video. Cool. Is we're going to be measuring reaction rate. And what we're going to use is we're going to use an Alka-Seltzer tablet. This is my Alka-Seltzer tablet. Standard little Alka-Seltzer tablet that you'd uh, take if you weren't feeling well. And so what I'm doing is I'm finding the mass, and you can see I have one tablet on the balance right there. It's got a mass of 3.26 or 25 grams. And they're fairly consistent to each other. Here's this one, 3.24. So within a hundredth of a gram, they're the same. And I'm measuring temperature of the water. You can see I have two thermometers going one of my beakers is at 24.7, one is at 24.6. I've got the GLX thermometers in them. And so what I'm going to be doing, the difference, I have the same water, the same mass of Alka-Seltzer, and what I'm going to be doing is measuring how fast they dissolve, and I'm going to be um, 
The difference I'm going to do is one of them I'm going to crush. So I'm going to make the surface area really big. So I'm going to do that by taking a mortar and pestle here. And I'm going to break up the one tablet to increase the surface area of the tablet. Okay. So I'm increasing the surface area. Now I have to be very careful to try to get all the chemical off. And this is a safe chemical, so I'm okay with my, my finger. Okay, so now the tricky part is I've got to add both the powdered Alka-Seltzer and the um, solid tablet at about the same time and start my stopwatch. I've got my stopwatch here. And so I'm going to have my powder, I'm going to have my tablet, and I'm going to start my time. Go. And what I'm trying to determine is if there is a difference between the crushed Alka-Seltzer and the regular whole tablet Alka-Seltzer. And you can see the crushed Alka-Seltzer. You see the thermometer in there. Lots of fizzing. Lots of fizzing in the other one too, but what we're going to see is when does it look like the tablet is all dissolved. We're at 28, 30 seconds right now on the stopwatch. So we have the mass the same, the water temperature the same, and the one that was crushed is almost all gone. This was my crushed one here on the left. And my other one I still have more in here. So um, actually fairly consistent. A little bit longer over here we have more fizzing. So it's been one minute. This one's pretty much all gone, no fizzing. Over here I still have some fizzing. So a little bit faster for the crushed Alka-Seltzer than for the solid. I still have quite a bit of bubbles coming up over here that I don't have in this one here. So, so increasing the surface area of the Alka-Seltzer tablet by crushing it, making it small particles, made the reaction go faster. Okay than the whole tablet. I still see active bubbling over here. I see very little bubbling in, in this beaker. Okay, that's kind of what I expected to happen, so I'm glad that uh, our hypothesis was right there on that. And Absolutely. are we ready for the quiz, do you think? Yeah, let's quiz it up. Okay, so go to your class website, take your mastery check quiz, and we'll see you guys in class tomorrow. See ya. See ya, guys. <laughs>